came out of the drink. I'm so relieved the audience will now know all of the, the story of Amalia. Molly something. You'll be fine here, Molly. <laughs> yeah, I might not. Now everything will be out in the open. We always wanted episode six to start with a jarring image, a spaceship in outer space kind of thing. This is where the story started. In the future, there's a soldier, and it starts there. So this is sort of everybody catching up to that place where the narrative actually began. And we meet Stripe, who is the character who goes on to become Amalia True. When we first meet her, she is fighting for the survival of the human race. All of the dreadful ways that we have been treating our planet and treating each other have all come to bear. There is a war over the prospect of a helpful alien species who is going to come save mankind from itself and which many people don't want help from. My name is Major Joseph Willing Greenbone, Tree Life for Life. We do not hide from God like you PDC dogs. We honor Trump. In the first chapter, we meet the Free Life Army and the PDC. And Stripe is a soldier who's fought probably most of her professional career for the PDC. I've never seen anyone pass them in this kind of call. I was running out of options. 20 Free Life Marauders dropped in an hour before you did. Our scanners read eight. I had an hour. Stripe. She's such a survivor and she's pretty wrecked. She's a professional life soldier, you know, she has just fought for what she's hoped has been the right side of history. And so there's this real inherent tension in Stripe and we meet her at a really sort of fateful point in her experience. Stripe's team, the, the PDC, are there to try and protect the Galanthi. And so much life has been lost in the process over the years that they've almost all forgotten what they're fighting for. Hold. The Galanthi, as we come to know them, have come obviously to help us, to try and wake us up and help us understand what's at stake. And they've been trying to communicate with us and the PDC's job is to try and protect them at all costs. Everyone appreciates the gravity of what this might be. The Galanthi is a highly evolved, benevolent, intelligent, emotional alien. It has a, found a particularly difficult species to help elevate. I never expected such playfulness. The Galanthi design really just starts from sketches on paper. We had three words. It was uh, elephant, octopus, T-Rex. The wiseness of an elephant and, and that, that great, like, tough, gray, leathery skin. But then we wanted the alien-esque qualities of an octopus where, like, light can translucently pass through it. The T-Rex part was to give him an assertive attitude as well. If provoked, it can be scary. No. It seems to be towards the end of the chapter that in fact this particular Galanthi is wanting to go home through the portal and it may very well close over once it's gone. Can you do one thing for me? Can you just hope that we make it right. Stripe gets to a point at the end of this chapter where she's pretty much been convinced by Nitta to have hope. And Nitta is shockingly killed. In that moment, Stripe says, that's it, I'm finished. In an extraordinary turn in the storytelling, Stripe is essentially the origin soul of who we know as Amalia. On those sweet little things. Barnum, I didn't expect to see you at this hour. <laughs> Molly the baker and has all of the positivity and hope of youth and um, she can see a nice life for herself going forward. But it, as time goes on, doesn't work out 
worked so well for her. Well, God makes his plans, so here we are. It's a really interesting statement about these three iterations of who we know as Amalia's soul. You know, we, we try so hard when we're traumatized to adapt, but so much of it becomes our identity. And, you know, Molly has such a, a tragic experience in her lifetime and has such limited choices that she takes the same road that Stripe does. And in these extraordinary moments, you know, timing-wise, ends up being saved just as the Galanthium are making their appearance. And it is who we come to know as Amalia, who is dragged out of the river and brought to the asylum. Hi, Molly. Oh, I had such fun with Sarah. I really did. 49, Charlie, take three, A and B mark. Mm. It was so lovely for us to, to be able to kind of have fun because all the scenes pre that, you know, the malady and Amalia are so weighted with so much backstory and the backstory is there. It's like we'd done all the work and we were able to sit in it and enjoy it. You're the one I trust to trust me back. That was also quite refreshing <laughs> and enjoyable. Can you give me a minute with Amelia, Amalia, <laughs> and then you and I can have our own little chat? What I love about The Never is, uh, is that every character has their own agenda. And those agendas might overlap and they might uh, align for a while. What's going on? Tell him what you saw. It's going to help. And so Amalia's needs and mission at that point necessitated her betraying Sarah. So Amalia is somebody we ultimately root for because we see her flaws and we see her struggles. And it's, she's not a happy character. She's not a character who's at peace with herself. She's a tortured character. And I think that is fascinating. We have a wonderfully flawed heroine in Amalia and letting her be flawed is one of the things I think makes this show so powerful and so innovative and so unusual. You said you were my friend. I'm sorry, I didn't have a choice. We've had a lot of anti-heroes. We've had a lot of really flawed heroes, a lot of heroes who are dealing with trauma, but they often aren't dealing with the really unattractive aspects of trauma. And we let Amalia go there at times. <laughs> I'm not good. I've got issues you literally don't have names for yet. You know what's coming and you care. I did my time. And I think that's really important. As these first six episodes go through, I think she is learning what she's supposed to be doing with this mission that she figures she's been given, but she really is quite lost, I think. But at the same time, she knows enough to know that um, that the Galanthe is where her, her hope should lie as well. The thing that really sets that in motion, first of all, of course, is, is hearing Mary's song. And then the next thing that happens is that she's able to find out what Mary's song meant, which is a message from the Galanthe. And in that moment, she decides to go and try and find the Galanthe to find out what she needs to know next. Talk to me! Why did it go so wrong? What we're just seeing by the time we get to episode six is the end of the beginning for Amalia. And everything that she does from here is kind of where she's been supposed to be. My name is Zephyr, Alexis Naveen. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you. She knows enough, I think, to be able to move forward and to accept, I think, to a degree where she is now in her own story, where she is in this world that she's found herself. She certainly doesn't have all of the answers. She just got a few more answers than she had before. <laughs> Did you think you were the only one who hitched a ride? 